We are filming at Eagle Beach, but no, it is not just another story about the beach today. What we're here to find out is the story behind these barricades. It's officially leatherback turtle hatching season. What should you know about it in order to protect them? While on the beach, be on the lookout during the months of March through July in Aruba because there could be a leatherback sea turtle sighting on shore. Sea turtle mamas will come on the beach during these months to lay her nest. Once she does what she needs to do in the sand, the incubation period is two months, then you could potentially see baby turtles hatching and making their way into the ocean to begin their life. After the last nest, it is possible to see activity all the way into September for the leatherbacks. This is, of course, a beautiful cycle of life. There is so much we can learn about these magical reptiles, and there is so much we can do as members of the community to protect and even help the species before, during, and after the hatching season. We spoke with Edith, who is the president of the only turtle foundation on the island, to get to know the leatherbacks a bit more. Well, the turtles go, are going down in number all over the world, not just here on Aruba. And they have their function in our ocean. They are so important. They are also very charismatic animals, but they also have their function. For example, this leatherback, they don't live here in the Caribbean. They live in the Atlantic Ocean because they feed on very, very big uh, jellyfish and they don't find them here in the Caribbean. And if they don't eat them, we have a lot more jellyfish and jellyfish eat plankton. And so everything is connected. If we don't have plankton anymore, we don't have fishes and anything. So they, sea turtles really play a very important role in our ecosystem and they exist for more than 100 million years. And I don't want humanity to Make an end of this. With what Edith said, the success rate for the hatching season is all the more important. Laura has been a volunteer with the Tortuga Foundation since 2017. She explains some of the threats and what to do and not do if you come across a laying mother or the moment the eggs hatch. For the laying mothers, it's always important to keep the beaches as dark as possible. This includes all artificial lights from buildings, from car lights, but also from our flashlights or on our phones. If a turtle is going to come up and she wants to lay um, a nest, if she sees a lot of light, she can get scared and go back into the ocean. The opposite is for hatchlings. They will be attracted to the light, which we don't want. We don't want them to go on the streets. Another point is not driving on the beach. It still happens a lot. On this side, we mark the nests very well, very obvious. But on other more wild beaches, we, we mark it with driftwood. So it is often that we've had tracks right next to the nest, which could affect also the hatchlings and the nest itself. The turtles will try a few times to come on shore to lay her eggs, but if she feels too threatened or stressed by elements such as artificial lights, then she will unfortunately drop her eggs into the ocean. So be mindful and do your part when you are on any beach during the leatherback season. The footage we are showing you right now are all recorded during the daytime, which is actually very rare. It is much more likely for the leatherbacks to come ashore in the nighttime and for the hatching to take place at night as well. So the threats of artificial lights that Laura mentioned are very important to note. Laura gives us a play-by-play -play look into the mother hatching her eggs, which can be up to a two-hour process on shore. So usually when she comes up on land, if she feels comfortable, she will hopefully go up quite high, as you can see here, because if she goes too close to the shore, then there's also a risk of flooding the nest. So she will she will look for a place where yeah, she feels comfortable and safe to, to lay it. And then she will start burying her own body, which is what we call a body pit. And then with her hind fins, she's gonna scoop sand and then scoop with the other sand. And that's called the chamber until she can't read, until nothing more comes up. And then she's gonna lay her eggs. And afterwards, she's gonna start covering with her hind, yeah. with her hind fins. One of the most fascinating things the volunteers told me about the hatching period is that Aruba's natural element can impact the number of males and females, baby sea turtles being born into the earth. When the turtle, female lady acts, then 
they are neutral. They are not male, not female yet. And the temperature in the third, fourth week will determine if there are more males or more females coming out of the nest. And the temperature, the hotter, more female, the cooler, more males. And because of the always blowing wind and the white sand, we think we produce, or we have done a study about that also, more males. And that is very good nowadays with the climate change and the global warming, because in the whole world, the number of males is going down. And we need them. For the locals and tourists of Aruba who are lucky enough to witness any sea turtle ashore, be cautious before getting too excited or whipping out your phones to take photos or videos. Of course, a lot of people get very excited, including us, when the hatchlings start to hatch. And a lot of people stand on this side. And it's important that if you're standing close to the ocean, the water doesn't touch your feet. Why? Because the babies are small. So once they crawl to through the sand, they're going to get into the ocean and sometimes the waves push them back and then we have a risk of stepping on them. This is something that is not, we, we often don't have time to tell people because the hatchlings hatch very fast, but it is a risk to get stepped on and then obviously no flashlights. A good nest will have 60 to 70 hatchlings. Only one in 1,000 of the baby sea turtles will make it in the wild due to the fact that they have natural predators. So we must do all we can to protect each and every one of them. Call the Tortuga Foundation hotline if you see any sea turtles on shore.